Hi, I'm Federico and this is what we are gonna build today. I love automating things, especially the boring ones. Having a YouTube channel, I found that uh, editing videos can be very time consuming and so I started thinking about ways to improve my workflow. My main bottlenecks are cutting the video clips and transferring the videos to the PC. Because I record those videos with my smartphone, I wanted an app that could control the camera from my PC, organize the clip files in a way that makes editing easier, and send the clips automatically to my computer. I searched for a while on the Play Store, but I couldn't find an app that completely satisfied my needs. And so, being a developer, I decided to build my own. Creating a camera app isn't a trivial task, so it made sense to start from an existing project. Luckily for me, Mark Herman created Open Camera, an awesome open source camera app for Android that I used as a starting point for my project. The goal at this point was clear. Forking open camera and adding the remote control and file transfer functionality. The open camera repository is hosted by SourceForge, but I wanted to fork it on GitHub. Thanks to the GitHub importer, the process was painless. After cloning the repository, I was ready to open the project on Android Studio to study the source code. But first, I had to check if I could compile the app. I started the compilation process. But as I already had Open Camera installed on my smartphone, I had a naming conflict. This happened because both the original and my forked version shared the same package ID. To fix this problem, all I had to do was to rename the package. All occurrences of net.sourceforge.opencamera have been replaced with my own package name. This was easily accomplished with the, the refactoring functions of Android Studio and also with the find in path action. I wanted to manage the camera app remotely, so the next thing to do was to find how Open Camera controlled the recordings. I started digging the source code. I wanted to find the UI code that triggered the recording. And one class, Main UI, caught my attention. Scrolling through the source, I stumbled upon the onKeyDown method, apparently used to manage events from the volume buttons and selfie sticks, which in turn called the main activities take picture method. After a bit of experimenting, I discovered that the take picture method controlled both the start and the stop of a video recording, so I was ready for the next phase. There are many ways to make an app capable of receiving remote comments, but the most versatile that I've found is the bundled web server approach. A basic HTTP web server is started in the app itself and other devices in the network can send requests, such as comments, and get responses, such as video files. The easiest way to bundle a web server into an app is by using the Nano HTTPD library that can be used by including this line in the Gradle config file. We will also need to add the access Wi-Fi state and internet permissions in the manifest file. I then created the remote server class, extending the nano httpd class and overriding the serve method. This function will be called every time a client makes an HTTP request to the bundled web server. I needed a way to trigger the take picture method when the serve method was called. Unfortunately, I could not call it directly from the serve method because the take picture method must be called from the main thread. To fix this problem, I used the, the powerful local broadcast manager class. In the main activity class, I created a constant used later for the broadcasts, then I created an instance of a remote server then, in the onResume method, I registered the broadcast and started the web server. Then, in the onPose method, I unregistered the receiver and stopped the web server. 
The last thing left to do is to send a broadcast from the serve method of the remote server. Let's say that your phone has this IP address. Then any other device in the network can access this address and this should trigger the start or stop of the recording in the app. This was a very basic proof of concept that you can use as a starting point for something similar. I also added many features such as file transfers and clip naming that you can check out by going to the git repository, link is in the description below. In the next video we will see how to create the desktop control panel in Go that will manage downloads and will control the app that we just created. Okay, so if you like the video and you want to know more about uh, this project, please consider subscribing to my channel because I will post uh, lots of other ideas, projects, tips, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.